Hey guys, Ryan Young, Kama Jiu Jitsu, and I hope you're doing well. Let's get into answering another question from our viewers, like you. So this is in response to our video from about a week or two ago, how one guy became ripped doing Jiu Jitsu on our Kama vlog. And this is Samo Dog, who's a frequent contributor to our comments. And I appreciate you, Samo, for, uh, for giving us stuff to do so. Because these are good questions, because if, if one of you asks the question, chances are, 9,000 others may have that same question. So, the question is, talking about body, how much of what you teach is influenced by your students' body types, and do we adapt much? So, the short answer is, we don't do anything by body types. The reason is, so is there different jujitsu for somebody tall versus short, big and muscular versus skinny? No, it's all the same jujitsu. A lot of people like to say, well, you know, my instructor is short and I'm 6'4", so I have to figure out my own jujitsu. No, that's not true. And a lot of people like to say, Ryan, you know, I don't agree with what you say because you're short and, and I'm tall, so your jujitsu won't work for me. Wrong, it works. Here's the thing, we do adapt, meaning we do have workarounds, but it's not for your body type. It's due to a limitation. So limitation could be, my shoulders are so jacked up that I can't put my arms flat on my back, so I can't let anybody get me in an Americana. Or it could be, I've had eight knee surgeries, and because of that, my knees don't quite have the range of motion that a regular knee would have, so I need to find a way to do it to do what I need to do with less range of motion. Or it could be, I, ha I had a broken rib so I can't take too much pressure um, from cross-eyed, you know, so on, so on and so forth. So those are workarounds that we'll do. Okay, so for you with that injury, we're gonna do things this way. For you with the knees, we're gonna do things this way. You know, you can't go passive toes underneath and you can't sit on your knees and, and have your feet under, you know, and, and you can't do that, so then we just play, you play more stand-up game, right? Now, are there advantages and disadvantages to being tall and short? Yes, for both. Small guys have certain advantages that big guys cannot take advantage of, and tall guys have advantages that certain small guys can't take advantage of either. So I'll give you an example. One example is the triangle from the guard, right? And what I do is I look at it as windows of opportunity. A small guy likes to say, and this goes back, goes back to one of our reasons why we quit videos, a small guy will say, I got short legs, so I can't triangle. Everybody in the school triangles really well. I suck at triangles, so therefore, maybe this jujitsu is not for me, so I quit, right? No, you can do a triangle. Guys with short legs can do triangles. The difference versus somebody with long legs is your window of opportunity. So what that means is you start off with guard, right? And you wanna get to a triangle and you wanna to get to your submission via triangle, right? So the window of opportunity goes from when you're playing guard to your submission. So here's the thing, me, short legs, muscular legs, I don't have a lot of room to have somebody's torso in my leg so I can lock a triangle. And when I do, I can't fully lock my foot up like this. I'm all the way out here and I'm having to use my toes. So here's the thing. If a guy is huge up in the upper body, it's gonna be a very small window of opportunity for me to get to a triangle. Meaning, I'm going this direction, I'm playing, I'm playing, I'm playing, I'm setting up, and I have this moment in time that I can do a triangle, and after that, no more opportunity to do it. On the other hand, somebody who's got long, thin legs, slender legs, they don't have a lot of muscle mass on there. You know, when they, when they triangle their legs and they lock their foot in, they still have a gap this wide that can fit any guy in there. So here's what it is. So they're playing guard, they're traveling through the guard, all of a sudden, they now can hook a triangle up. And guess what? That opportunity goes all the way to here. Their window of opportunity is that big. So anytime in the progression of playing guard from setting up to executing a triangle, they can execute it any time here. They can initiate any time in here. Whereas with me, I can initiate from here to here. That doesn't mean I can't do a triangle. It just means that my window of opportunity is much smaller than this particular person. On the other hand, let's say we switch the position. It's not a triangle, maybe it's a mount escape. 
Somebody with long legs is going to have a lot of room for me to wiggle around in there and for me to get my knees inside, right? So that means that for me playing a mountain escape, I have a window of opportunity this big. With me trying to hold down somebody in mount and somebody who's got really long legs, when they get to their side and try to bring their knee up, guess what? You know, my leg is only giving them this much room, but they've got that much more room to go. So they're going to have to move their hips even more to get out. Whereas with me, when they got long legs, their legs are out to here and I've got all this room to move my legs in, right? So it's windows of opportunity. So going back to the question, do we adapt to different types? No. Everybody learns the same techniques. But what you discover is that for different things based on your body, you have different windows of opportunity to execute a particular technique or set of techniques. The mistake that we have is that if this is my window of opportunity for triangles, I automatically say I can't do triangles and I don't do them. That is mistaken. I need to still try to do them, but I just have to be more perfect in my execution. On the other hand, the person who has the widest window of opportunity for triangles, what they end up doing is doing only triangles because triangles come easy. They can do it at any time. For them, it's slow motion. It's like they can wait, play guard, wait, wait, wait. I can do the triangle there. Yep, triangle, triangle, triangle. As the person's moving, yep, 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 yep. I can still get the triangle. But what happens is they end up getting sloppy in their technique. They've got the repetition, which is good, but sometimes they execute it here, sometimes they execute it here, sometimes they execute it here. What you want is you want to be able to execute right here all the time. And in that way, if you make a little bit of mistake, you're forgiven. Don't fall into that trap of thinking to yourself, I'm long, I'm tall, or I'm short, so I need to play this game. No, you learn it all, right? Learn it all, and once you learn it all, then you're gonna realize what your windows of opportunity are. Don't say I'm better or I'm worse at anything. Just say this is my window of opportunity. So for me, when I'm working on triangles, I'm gonna, I have to work to get it right here. So, but when I get it, it's in good, right? There's no looseness at all, because why? We went all through here, and at that window of opportunity, I took it. So for that, my technique has to actually be better at doing triangles than somebody in this position here. On the other hand, this person good at triangles needs to work on their mount escapes, right? And they need to get it perfect so they can deal with the, the extra limb length that they have so they can get out of it. In summary here, I want you to think of it in a different way. Some guys, they just play guard a lot. I knew one guy who just played a lot of guard. But when he got up on top, right, I told, you know, that person, the training partner he had, just kept passing his guard, passing guard, passing guard. His guard pass was better than his guard. But being that he, he always had that window of opportunity for, for guard, he always played guard. Well, I told this particular student who was passing his guard, I said, no more passing his guard. So what he did was he passed his guard and then he just simply rolled over and let the guy get on top of him. Well, being that he, he played in his, what, was, what, was, what worked for his, his limb length, he didn't know how to play top game because he didn't bother to learn at all. Which led me to believe that his game was one dimensional, once you pass his guard, he had nothing. Or once you pass his guard, he's going to try like hell to get you back to guard, and then you're going to do this drill all over again. But once you have somebody who's better at passing than you are at playing guard, guess what? You have nothing after that because you didn't bother to learn everything. Go ahead and make sure you learn everything. Don't try to tell yourself, my body type is better for this, so I'm going to play this game. No. Play everything, get good at everything, and then from there, you'll be able to try to, in a match, get somebody into the game that you have the largest windows of opportunity to exploit them. But if you cannot get them in that window of opportunity, in that position where you have the large window of opportunity, you'd have practiced the other areas of the game where you have smaller windows of opportunity and you'll be able to still win in that way. So hopefully that helped. If you haven't already, check out the Patreon channel. I know I say it all the time with every video, but you need to get onto this. You need to see this stuff. We've got over 130 videos on there of Master Dave teaching and going over stuff that is, it's the stuff that'll blow your mind, really. It, it, it's just, a lot of them are simple concepts that if you just kind of just change here, it'll change everything. Um, we get a ton of reviews on this stuff and it's good stuff. So even a lot of our students, our own students, subscribe to that as well. And they do that kind of as a supplement. That's all I got for you. Take care, be sure to subscribe, hit the like button, and we'll see you soon. Happy training, bye-bye now.